when you realise how influential our music has been over 30 years as Joy Division and New Order, it, it's quite surprising that we didn't start because of music. It was just purely finding a way of expressing yourself. I, I read about this phenomenon of punk and the, you know, the London, the way that London had taken to it and um, suggested we, we go and see uh, this London punk group, which was Sex Pistols, and it was 50p. And when we saw them, we were... Well, we, you'd, I'd never seen anything like it in my life. When we saw the Sex Pistols and Johnny Rotten, he, the music didn't grab you. It was the attitude. And it was the attitude that you wanted to be involved in. And there was no thought to music in, in many ways afterwards. It, it was a bit shocking to think, oh, now we have to make some music. After the concert had finished, we said, let's form a group. And he went, I've got a guitar. And I went, right, I'll get a bass. And uh, the next day I went home and I borrowed 35 pounds off my mother, God rest her soul, and uh, bought a bass guitar. I, I think very badly of New Order now, and I find it very hard to uh, appreciate or enjoy anything <clears throat> that New Order have done because of the way that we are now. Um, I realise now that we, we had terrible management, you know, after Rob. I think we made a terrible mistake not having a proper manager. I think that was one of our biggest mistakes. <clears throat> so it enabled me and Bernard to fight. And it was obvious it was going to be the downfall uh, of New Order. So the best of New Order is the music because we made such fantastic music, you know. And it's again a great compliment to your art when to be quoted verbally and uh, musically as much as you are you know there's very very few occasions when I go, I go out or when I listen to the radio or anything and I don't hear something that sounds like New Order. The immediacy of my sound uh, sometimes embarrasses me and also makes me very paranoid because it's like in music everybody always wants to move on to the next thing you know, and I, I never could. I was always, ying, Peter Hook. I mean, you know, Peter Hook. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. You know, I, it was like I, I struggled for a long time in 1990 um, to, to, to sort of get rid of myself. It's a great compliment. It's a great compliment that people uh, admire your art because that's what it is. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't read music. Uh, I can't tune my guitar. I'm, I'm, I don't have the ear to, to tune it and I can't play other people's music. So I was having a conversation with Susie Quattro last week in Mallorca and uh, I was telling Susie Quattro, she was, she was saying she's very good. She's a very gifted musician and yet she plays <laughs> rubbish to me. You know, and I'm not a gifted musician, and yet people say, oh, you, the melodies you come up with are, you know, wonderful. And I was saying that I was, um, when the Rolling Stones, when Bill Wyman left the Rolling Stones, I was fifth in line for the Rolling Stones on the list. It was number one, I don't know, it was John Entwistle or something like that, number five was me. And it was really weird, because if the Rolling Stones had come to me and said, we want you, I was going, fucking no way, because I can't play other people's songs. I just can't do it. You know, if, if, he, if Mick Jagger put a gun to my head and said, play Satisfaction, I couldn't play it. I, I'd just say, shoot Mick. You know, no chance, I can't do it. And uh, I was telling Susie Quattro this story, and she said, you know what's weird? She said, I was number six. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing in designing a band that people don't do these days is, is that they, they don't have characters. I mean, you yourself are a fantastic character. Like Alan McGee is a fantastic character. To my mind, th those people, there's millions of bands, but there aren't the Rob Grettons, there aren't the Tony Wilsons, there aren't the Martin Hannits anymore. And that, to me, seems to be one of 
the the worst stages of music is is that you know you lack the behind the scenes people because what was fantastic about Tony Wilson and, and Martin and Rob Gretton was that they weren't interested in money and as a musician musicians are very very short sighted uh, very easy very gullible very naive but you do need somebody who who has a better idea who has a bigger idea musicians are very narrow you know, drugs, sex, booze, it's just like that. The, the sad thing about them was that they were terrible businessmen. But in some ways, that's the best. <laughs> now you think that's the fucking best thing about them. Because music is encumbered by great businessmen. And they are killing. They're killing it. Accountants and targets are killing music. Making music... Is, 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 is an expensive pastime and the thing is is that you, you're, you're not ridiculous that you're asking for something that you don't deserve. To make a record is, is a lot of time and effort and you can't put that time in anymore because you, you don't get paid for your time. I, I don't have the time. My Freebase, I look at Freebase and I, I look at it seriously and think this is the last record I will make because I couldn't do what I've done with that anymore. I can't, I can't afford to, to do that. I still have to work for a living. And I, I, it's really badly paid work. You know, four years work to do a record and as soon as you give it one person, it's gone. That, that is not very good. Any businessman and any account would say that sucks. <laughs> Don't do it. It makes me laugh whenever I hear a, a large record company crying poverty. No, oh, I've got no money. I've got no money. Well, where did all the other money go from all the other years? You know, where's that gone? But it, it's, it's, not an, it's not a good enough excuse to me. I mean, to my mind, music has always been about um, nurturing and has been about belief. Joy Division was so easy which was the strangest thing, I, I said this in the documentary, you know, it was, it was really easy being in Joy Division. It was easy writing that music. And when Ian died, it suddenly got very, very difficult. And it's been difficult ever fucking since.